So what we're going to do today, uh, it, we're not going to do just one tip, but I'm doing the official 12 tips of Christmas. Um, if you haven't already downloaded, I see that uh, a couple of you haven't, and uh, two of you have. If you haven't already downloaded it, make sure you get Oomph Editor. As uh, I have to say, it'll really increase your product productivity when it comes to tweaking your project, or even just refreshing your mind as to how you actually did that tricky hotspot animation a couple of months ago. Yeah, for me, it's like you know, I, I do something and, and I put it into a project, and about two months later, I go, I want to use that again, and I cannot remember for the life of me how you know these complex things, how I did them. So that's why Oomfed is really good, and I'll be using it um, a lot today. But remember uh, that if you are using it, it's a work in progress, and there's a, a maybe a speed bump or two. But we're really looking for feedback on how we can improve it, and uh, your feedback is more than welcome. Okay, so let's just come into sharing here. And I'm going to share my screen. So the, the first tip, tip number one, is to animate your VIPS text blocks. And we all know how to build a vertical in-page slideshow, but one of the usability issues people have is not knowing that you can scroll them for more information. You know, and obviously we can add arrows and other UI elements to prompt the reader to scroll, you know, and you see a lot of magazines do that. But one of the things that we found just recently that's really helping is to actually animate the content when the page loads to show that the field isn't static. That way it provides a strong visual clue to the reader this content may be more than what it seems. So I'm going to show you a couple of little examples. This is a, a, a project I've just recently, um, recently been working on. For those of you who haven't used Orm Editor, this is how it works. It's very cool. I'm just going to drag my, uh, my bundle or my project onto Orm Editor, And a second or later, it'll pop up. And just a quick look around here, this is a, an editing area. These are a list of all the sections that I've got. It's showing me hotspot information, etc. And I can also preview it on the simulator, or if I have an iPad plugged in, I can preview it on the iPad. I can also preview the whole project, or I can preview just individual areas of it. So I'm just going to preview the, the whole thing, and I'm going to show you how I've used a, an animated vertical in-page in slideshow to show that the fact that it can be scrolled. And a second later, the little simulator is going to open, and it's installing the project. And this is my little opening cover here. You notice I've got a little animated swipe to begin down here, and I'll be talking about that as one of the tips as we go further. But if I go into the contents page, this is what we mean about a vertical in-page slideshow animating to start with. So once again, we'll come from here into here, and I'm animating the slideshow up. So this gives an indication to people that there are more or it's an interactive element that there's because of the movement in it. So if we want to apply that to, to our text boxes, so what I'm going to do now is drag my webinar folder onto here, and here's all my different tips. So we'll launch this on the simulator. And here we are, the 12 tips of Christmas. First one, so what we're doing here is we're just doing a simple scroll. Now, in the text, I've got a little arrow embedded as well. So it just indicates that there is more down there. But by starting off with the animation, it gives us it gives an idea that something is going to happen. A second, second version, in addition to the embedded arrow, I'm going, I've added a custom animation to the slide. And this time, it's going to do a little bounce at the end. So it's going to come up and then back down. So once again, single slide up, up, and a bounce back down. I've got a third example where I've put a sort of a little parallax. I've got a couple of different layers moving at different times. And here's our third one. And then after a second, it fades out. OK, so how do we, how do we achieve something like this? Well, if we come into our our section here, 
So we can see that on our page, we've got a simple vertical in-page slideshow. And we can see over here in the hotspot editor, it's telling us what the code is attached to that hotspot. In here, we can resize these pages down so we can see the whole thing. Now, in my vertical in-page slideshow, I simply have this block of text. So that's just a S1-1, but I've attached a standard animation move in from bottom to it. And then in my animations, this is my move in from bottom. So I'm bringing it in from a certain point to zero, zero. Now the thing to remember when you're, doing the, when you're animating these VIPS text blocks, that if you're using a custom animation, this is based upon the zero, zero point of this frame here. So when I tell it to stop at zero, zero, up in this code here, it's going to stop at the top of that frame that I've built. So that's the important thing to remember, that your starting point and your finishing point are relative to the hotspot. Okay, so uh, let's look at the second one where we do the bounce it. So this is the tip where it comes up and then comes back down in again. So same thing, we use exactly the same field. This time I'm using an, a custom animation called bounce in. And if I look at the custom animation here, and once again, I'll just double click in here so we can see a larger version of it. So we've got a couple of things happening here. And what this is, this is a, an animation where it plays two, two animations, but separately, not at the same time. You've probably, most of you have probably used uh, move in from left and fade in, so it fades in and moves at the same time. What this is, this is a second animation after the first one finishes. So it's a bit messy here in terms of sort of the, the layout. Let me just straighten this up a bit. So the first animation is, it's moving from 500 to minus 50. So remember before I said that it's relative to the hotspot. So this time I'm pushing it 50 pixels past the top of the top of the hotspot. Then once it gets to that point, then it does another animation, which is this one here. And in this case, it comes from the new finish point, which is 0, 0, minus 50, back to 0, 0, which is once again the top of the field the hotspot field that we've got in there. So this one here pushes it up over the top, and this one brings it back into place. So once again, if we, if we look at that, there it goes, up and then back. So this one just slides from 400 up to 0, 0. This one slides from 500 to minus 50, and then back to 0. And the last one, where we've got the multiple layers. So once again, we use the same vertical in-page slideshow. Now, what's a bit different here is my vertical in-page slideshow is a PDF with two hotspots on it. The back hotspot is looking at an object called text block and an animation called text in. And the small overlay is looking at an object called overlay and overlay in. Okay, so my vertical in-page slideshow comp is comprised of two hotspots, this one and this one. So here are my two object folders, overlay and text block. Obviously, text block is our standard block of text that we had before, and S1-1 is the little panel that slides up over the top of it. Now, I've got two animations. I've got the text in, and if we look at the animation here, you can see that this is a, a, just a basic slide in, a three second slide in coming from 500 pixels down to zero, zero. So just below the, it's starting just below the hotspot and finishing at the, the top of the hotspot. The second one, the overlay in, So once again, this is doing two different animations. We've got the, the uh, movement in, so it's a 1.7 second move in, so it's a, 
It's a little faster than the first one, but I've got a slight delay on it. And then in this case, I'm going just outside the, the hotspot box, but I'm not going all the way to the top. I'm going to stop at 149 pixels down. And then after three seconds, I want it to fade out. So once again, hopefully it's going to work. If I come to here, there's the two animations and then the fade out. Okay. So that's um, animating your vertical in-page slideshows. That's one of the tips uh, and from a usability point of view, it's proved to be uh, quite popular. People seem to like it. Um, do we have any questions? on vertical in-page slideshow thing me once. <laughs> Everybody okay with that? So it's a bit of fun, a bit of custom animation and a bit of objects and what have you. Um, if there's no questions, the next one we're going to look at is a video poster frame. Um, I did a video a few months ago that's up on YouTube and on our, our, our forum um, about creating poster frames by exporting a PDF without the media in it. Well, we've got a new update and it's even easier now. Um, for those of you who don't know what a video poster frame is, it's a still shot from the video with a button as a call to action to play. So here's an example of what I mean. Let's take a look at this. So that's what a, a poster image looks like. You know, you've got the first frame of the video, it could be the tenth frame of the video, and a little call to action on top of it. So every time I come back into that page, it's going to show me that first frame with that call to action. So one of the nice things about doing it this way is that everything matches up exactly. That when you hit that first frame, if you notice clearly, it just really starts pretty much dead on there. So I'm going to show you actually how we do that. So we'll come back in, we'll come into our InDesign. And we're going to open this little thing for poster image here, and I'm just going to, for now, uh, I'm just going to bring up these. I'm just going to move this off the frame here. So the first thing we do is we place the video onto the f onto the page and position it. So I'm going to do file place, and I'm going to go and find my little piece of video here. Okay, and actually, yep, yeah, this one here, Outback Australia. MP4. And you notice when I come into InDesign, it's going to give me a little sort of icon now that uh, shows me that it's a, it's a movie file I'm loading. So I simply drop it into place, and a second or two later, it'll actually load a frame in there. So I'm going to position it where I want it, and I'm going to scale it down into the section here. Now, if I come into my media, Okay, we can see the video in here. I'm just going to say none and then take the poster from the current frame for this one here. So when you load sometimes, it may not load the first frame, but the way to do it is just to simply say none and then say from current frame. So basically what that's done now, that's set a poster frame for us. Now in the old video, I had you output it and not put the media in and everything else like that, but it's much, much easier now. So what we want to do is we want to take the direct selection tool, come across to our video here, and we're simply going to control C to copy it. Now I can delete all of that out, and I can then do an edit, paste in place. And there's that frame pasted in place. Now what I'm going to do is over here, I've got my little controller that I want. So I've, I've pre-made that. I'm just going to uh, bring that to the front. So there's my little controller for my call to action. All I need to do now is select that frame, come into here, and call it in page video one. And that's it, ready to go. So when I come back now into my file here, where I've output this, you'll see that I've got a P1-1 page here, 
If I tap on this, you see it's calling IPv1, and there's my video. In fact, on the example I've done here, is this is actually not using the very first frame. So I'm actually going to output it with the very first frame on there. I'm just going to come back in InDesign. We've got all that in place. Okay, I'm just going to file, export this, and we'll come into webinar, video poster frame. Now, here's one of the, just to give you an idea, this one of the little bugs in, in editor at the moment. Once you open editor, it locks all the files, so I can't actually write that over the top of it. So I have to put this little A here to, to save it. And we'll export that out. We'll close up InDesign. And I just need to um, come into the webinar and delete out that old one. Change it from one to A, and there we go. There we go. And you notice that over here in the editor, it's updating it as I change it here, so it reflects the changes. Okay, so let's take a look at that. We'll just look at this time. We're just going to look at this section. Okay, so rather than having to compile the whole thing now, it'll just simply look at that small section. Okay, so there's our first frame of our video. Tap on here, off she goes. A really great way to, and a very, very quick way to make poster frames. Um, anybody have any questions? Yeah, I, I, I love it. The, the great thing about doing a poster frame that way is it's dead accurate. You know, you know exactly it's going to be the right size when it plays. It's just it's, there's no shifting or anything else like that. It's very, very, uh, very, very neat and really fast. Much faster than the old way that I had. I'll have to update the video. Okay, if no more questions, we're going on to tip number three, and I think you'll like this one. This is an angled slideshow. So. Regular slideshows are so 2012 now and a piece of cake. We all know how to do uh, you know, a horizontal slideshow or a vertical slideshow. So I think we should shake it up in 2013 and go with an angled slideshow or in oomph vernacular, an AIPS. So what I want to do is give you a look at what we're going to be building. So we'll come back and we'll preview all in the simulator. I've got a little animation where this do not enter sign appears. You'll also notice there's a little call to action. The, the little arrows are, are, are jumping a couple of times. This is something we're going to talk about soon. This is part of shimmy, wiggle, and pulse. So what's really interesting here is this is a angled slideshow. And basically at the moment, it's just on a loop moving through this slideshow. So this is pretty cool. So let's first of all come back into InDesign. I'm going to clear out a few of these and we're going to come to our sign. Okay, so there's a couple of things that you want to remember here. First of all, I'm just going to turn off the hotspot. So here's my basic sign that I've, I've made up. Okay, I'm just going to um, ungroup it. So the elements that go to make up that sign are as follows. I've got the background of the sign. Okay, this is so that if any, I don't want to see anything through it. So I've just copied this out, and I've actually used this as one the first slide as well. So it's also a background element, but it's also the first slide. Then what I've got is my hotspot for my in-page slideshow. Now, if you can see down in the corner here, it's saying in-page slideshow one, rotate. So it's got an animation applied to it. Then I've got a shadow and I've got the sign. So the sign itself has an opening inside of it and the, and the slideshow will sit behind it. This is quite important. You'll see that in a second. And then the last thing I've got is a hotspot over the whole page because I want to animate all these things on as an animated object. So the first thing we need to do is, obviously, we want the sign to be rotated. So I'm going to select all the elements that I want to rotate and group them together. Before I do that, we want to make sure that 
our rotation point is set properly. The shadow and sign are actually going to sit on the top level, so I can just I can group these two straight away. So I'll just select those two and group them. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that up here the rotation point, the reference point, is in the center. So then I turn on my IPS, and once again, yes, that's in the center. And my sign background, that's in the center. So all of these are in the center. So we'll select them all now and group them all together. What I want to do is apply the rotation to the sign. So I'm going to come into here and I'm just I'm going to do a rotation of 15. Okay? And that's the angle that I want my sign to be on. Now here's the really important part is that we don't want the hotspot to be rotated. We're actually going to rotate that using an animation. If we leave this as it is, it's not going to work properly. Okay? So what we have to do now is we have to ungroup this, these objects. And then we come into more objects to ungroup. Okay. Then we'll come back and we'll select the hotspot animation and I'm going to come back into my animation and I'm going to minus that 15. Okay, so the important thing is to have all of your other elements rotated but not your in-page slideshow. That should stay where it is. Okay? Now because the slide is going to be behind this frame, remember this frame is, is open and my, slide is sitting behind, my slides are sitting behind it, one of the things that a uh, tip for you is that if you have your slideshow on the top, the edges of the uh, slides are going to look a bit jagged because it doesn't anti-alias properly. But if you put it behind something as in a frame of some kind, then you don't see that at all. Okay, so let's come back and I'll show you what the, the finished one looks like here, ready to go. Okay, so here's my sign. There's my in-page slideshow inside there. Let's come back in. So we're going to then take this whole thing and move it in. So let's just hide that, come back into here, slide this on. There it is, it comes up. There's my slideshow. Very cool. And nice, all smooth edges, but hanging like that. So let's go and have a look at the files that it takes to make that. Okay, so we'll start off with um, a background. We don't have to worry. These are just some of the old ones, the vertical in-page slideshow, the in-page video. If I just come out of here. So this is my hotspot. So I've got the P1-2 with a move in from bottom with a with a hotspot on it pointing to old sign. In the object folder old sign, I've got three files. I've got my background. I've got my in-page slideshow calling the rotate animation. And on top of it, I've got my outline. In in-page slideshow, I've got two files in here. My first file are my slides. So one of the cool things too you can do inside editor, if I right click on here, because this is a, a multiple page PDF, I can say show me single page continuous. And there's my files. And you'll notice over here I've got a little hotspot here, which is calling black right arrow one and an animation called shimmy right. Over the top of this, I've got the two uh, titles. The no, no title for the first one, but I've got the move in from bottom for the two titles. So even if you have multiple pages, the, um, the angled uh, slideshow will still work with multiple pages. So then for our animation, we've got three animations. Obviously our basic move in from bottom and our rotate animation. This is what rotates the slideshow. And once again, I'll put these all up online for you after the webinar is finished. So here's our rotate animation. Okay, so it does a little fade in and then it rotates 15 degrees to 15 degrees. So it's a bit of a trick where we're sort of 
we, we put these two things in because we don't actually physically want to see it rotate. We just want to go from 15 and it stays at 15. So this is the animation for the rotation. And then here's a little uh, animation for the shimmy, which is doing that little thing. But I'm going to come to that in, a, in another tip, so we won't worry about that now. But there we go. Angled slideshows. What do we think of that one? Do we like that? Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, it is pretty neat. I, I have to say, adding animations to these things are, are quite amazing, some of the things you can do. One of the other things I'm going to uh, do now, one of the things I really like, and what I've used a lot in my recent project, the one I showed you before, the YPO, I'll probably actually do it in. I'll probably actually do a video of this sometime of how to do the angled slideshow because I, I think that's pretty cool. Um, one of the the very cool new features in UMF, in fact, it was actually released a while ago in version 17, is the ability to use text objects. Now, probably like me, most of us use. You know, we want to put text on a page. We we put the text into a PDF. We export the the PDF and we place that onto the page and. And, and there we go. Sort of very much like what we've done up here in the in the simple slide, you know, a vertical in-page slideshow. There's our block of text sort of fixed. The problem is, is that if you want to change this or you want to edit it, you've got to go back into InDesign. You've got to, you know, restyle it. You've got to you know, put everything back together, export it again, what have you. So it, it's hard to change it quickly. Text objects are text files that you, you can add as a layer or within objects. They, they can be named like any other UMF files, but with a TXT extension. And the special thing about, well, actually, let me show you first. Probably better if I show you, then I'll explain how it goes. So what we're going to look at here are text objects. And I think uh, in here. So what we've got now, I've got a little header in here, and I've got a block of text in here. If I come in here and look at uh, text files, We'll come into P1-1. What you can see here is I've got two hotspots. Okay? The first one's called Orion Title, and the second one is called Orion Body. Okay? If I come and look at P1-2, that's just something that's sort of sitting over the top of it um, and with a bunch of hotspots which we don't really need, which we can delete if we want to. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so uh, I don't have... Uh, just hotspots here, I don't have any text in or anything else like that. But both of these are referring to objects, Orion title and Orion body. So if I open Orion body, you see that here we've got a little file called an s1-1.txt. If I look at that, that's just a text file. If I open it up, that's all it is. It's just a simple text file. And same with Orion title. If I look at that, it's the same thing. It's just got Kimberley Expeditions. So the cool thing here is if I, if I want to change this, okay, if I want to change this to 2012 Expeditions and save it, I can. Okay, so if I come back and I come back into here and we'll look at that again. Now we'll come through to... Uh, our text file. So now you can see that that title has changed. Okay, so I'm not having to I'm not having to re-export PDF files. In fact, of text objects is that the text files are automatically converted to HTML, and specifically, the application automatically converts your paragraphs and lines into HTML div elements. Okay, if you know anything about divs and, and HTML, what that means is that you can use style sheets to control the look and feel of this. And this is where it's incredibly powerful. So for instance, here, I'm, I'm just using a default, but I want this to be styled. Now, one of the things I'm going to talk about a little later on about tips is shared. We have a folder here called Shared, and I don't know how many of you use Shared Layers yet, but it's something you really need to get into. Shared Layers are where we remove content from individual sections and put them into shared places where they can be available to all these sections. And specifically, if I come into here, you see I'm sharing animations, I'm sharing layers, and I'm sharing objects. So remember we saw that little black arrow 
animating. Well, that's actually an object here, and I can share that to any folder I like. But the one I'm, I'm interested in at the moment is default, because in default, I've got a CSS style sheet. And if I open it up here, you see that there's two styles. In fact, if I open this, will it, oh, it's going to open in Dreamweaver. Okay, so there we are in Dreamweaver, and we can actually see the styles there inside Dreamweaver. I'm just going to hide that for a sec. And at the moment, they've got a little one behind it. I'm going to take the one away. So we've got a style for a Ryan title, and we have a style for a Ryan body. We have an object called a Ryan body, and we have an object called a Ryan title. So now with this global style sheet, if I come back into here, and I'm just going to save that, I'm going to come in and say, let's go to the simulator, show me all. And I'm going to just come across to text file CSS. And you see what we've got now. Now we've got styled text. So the 2012 Expeditions is red and italic now. And the main body of the text Alignment's been changed, line spacing and word spacing's been changed based upon these two styles that we've done here. So one of the neat things is now that you know, if you want to change the color of a Ryan title, you just simply change the color here. But even better than that is that we can create complex styles. So I'm just going to come back, and one of the great the tip here is to use Dreamweaver to actually start doing your styling. Uh, no, I don't want that. So I'm just going to open this and open recent. So one of the things that I do is I come in here and actually use Dreamweaver to define my styles. So I've just got a couple of styles here, and down in here I've just put the, the text of the body. So, uh, the question was to help reduce the file size too. Certainly does, certainly does. It's much, much smaller. This is just tiny little text files. It's, there's nothing to them at all. So anytime you're doing text, I would certainly recommend doing it this way. It's going to be much more flexible for you. gives you many, many more options in terms of things you can do. Also, using shared layers is great because it means that you're not having to repeat these objects over and over again. I think I'm going to run out of time here. I'm only up to tip five. Um, so what you can see here is I've styled the title. So I've, I've actually created here a background color, and I've created um, a border at the bottom here. At the moment, it's three pixels. Here, if I made it 30 pixels, it, it would look chunky like that. So um, I can, I'll take that back to, to three. Now, rather than sort of uh, go back and change my global style, because I may be using my global style in a number of different places, but on this particular page, I want the title to look like this. I want it to have the brown color, and et cetera, et cetera. So one of the things I can do is I can actually take this piece of style code. I'm just going to copy it out. I'm going to come back into a Riot title where my piece of text is. And you'll notice that inside here, I have another style sheet inside the folder. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to paste that into the root folder where the text is. I'm going to save that. We'll come back to the simulator. We'll load it up. And you can see how great it is using the simulator and, and uh, all fed it to him really fast in terms of testing. And we'll come in here. And now my header looks like this fully styled. So what's happening here is that even though there is an over a, a default style sheet over my whole project for anything, I could, instead of calling this a title, I could just call it title. Okay? And so anytime I use an object called title, it would have all these attributes applied to it. Because I've got a style sheet referencing the same thing inside it, it looks at this one first. So for instance, if I if I took out font weight bold and I left font style or font weight, I put normal in here, then this would apply the normal style, but everything else in here would be applied. So once again, I can, I can come into here and I can change that. I can come back and I can change it. Kimberly Expeditions. 
I can save that. And if I came into the style sheet here and I wanted like the, the background color to be blue, I could change that to blue and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And if I wanted the, the 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 border color at the bottom to be black, we could do that. Save all that. Hit on the simulator again. There we go. Let's come into text file tips. And there's our new header. Fantastic you know, for improving uh, your, the time to take you to build these things. Your changes are just immediate. Um, I've just finished a big project with like 80 pages, all done with PDF text. And if I'd known about this, I would have uh, certainly done it that way. Okay. So remember, Dreamweaver, style sheets, go and check out the forum because it's got all the information about it. Okay, how are we doing? Everybody still here? No, we've lost. No, we're also here. Good, good. Um, okay, the next tip we're going to look at are vertical full screen slideshows. So let's uh, come into here. We're just going to skip one. Oh, where are we? Oh, actually, no, we're not. Oh, yeah. We'll come back to this one. There's a little shimmy going on. Um, we'll come into here. And what we're going to look at now are vertical full screen slideshows. So here's my little view of the slideshow button. I tap on that and voila, a vertical full screen slideshow. Tap it, goes away, there it is again. Okay, how do we make vertical full screen slideshows? Well, let's come back into InDesign. We're going to close this up here. We're going to come into vertical in-page slideshow and then we'll open this up. So that's just my little uh, button calling that. In fact, we don't have anything here. So uh, first of all, you need to create, your, obviously create your hotspot for the full page slideshow. So what I've got here is I've got my, uh, I've got a rectangle here. If I select that, it's calling uh, uh, S2, it actually should be calling S1, but uh, I'll just change that to S1. So that's calling S1. So let's go in and have a look at our pages here and see what we've got. So there's our page one. Here's our little button that sits on top. And here's our link. So if I click on that, it's just calling a full screen slideshow S1. Now normally if we just called that full screen slideshow, that would be a horizontal slideshow. So how do we go and make it into a vertical slideshow? Okay, so what we do first of all, let's come into the S1 folder where normally we'd have our set of images. In this case, it's a blank page with a hotspot. And that hotspot is calling a vertical in-page slideshow. So instead of a normal slideshow, we just have a single page calling a vertical in-page slideshow. And then in my vertical in-page slideshow, here's my slideshow. As simple as that. And you put them all together and you end up with a vertical in-page slideshow. Now one of the new things you can do, I think I can actually probably do this now too, is there's a new command called no loop. So no loop, and let's see if this is going to work. If I tap on this one, two, three, you see it's not scrolling all the way around anymore. So if you apply no loop, it means that your animations won't loop. And this applies to all slideshows. Okay, so that's vertical in-page slideshow. I'm just going to uh, pop back a bit now to, we're going to go and look at shimmy, wiggle and pulse. So one of the other interesting things is to uh, call attention by actually having sort of these little animations appearing. So you can see down in the, the bottom right corner, I've got this little, uh, this little button sort of pulsing up and down. We've created a set of animations that you guys can download that do these little tiny sort of interactive things. So we call them shimmy, wiggle and pulse. And uh, you'll be able to download a set of them from the forum when the webinar is posted. Um, 
So how do these things work? So let's go and take a little look at this. So shimmy and shake. Okay, so first of all, I've just got my background file here and I've got my text uh, here as part of that background and I can zoom in and, and show you what's down there. Okay, it just says hide the sign. On top of that, we have a P2, P1-2. Okay, what this has got now, it's got two, I've got two hotspots in it. PH logo background and PH logo pulse. So that's the button and this is the shadow. Because what I want to achieve is this feeling of the, uh, as the button leaves the page, the shadow gets larger and, and uh, less, um, less opaque. And as the button gets closer to the page, it, the shadow gets smaller and more opaque. So once again, you can see here, I hope you can see that, as it grows up, the shadow gets larger. As it comes down, the shadow gets smaller. Uh, for the designers in the room, you can obviously see the fatal mistake I've made is I've got this shadow over here and I've got this shadow going in the wrong direction, so never mind. Okay, so remember we've got these two hotspots pointing to two objects. First one PH logo BG and the second one PH logo. We have two folders, PH logo BG and PH logo. In here is a little PNG file, two PNG files. The reason I'm using PNGs is because PNG is the native file format of the iPad and it renders very, very quickly. Okay, so you're not getting any delay in terms of the rendering. One of the hard things to render are shadows, so soft shadows are better done as PNGs. So if I do them both as PNGs, they're fine. They look a bit ragged on the simulator, but when you put them on the iPad, they look gorgeous. Really, really beautiful. So we've got those two and then we've got our animations here. We've got two pulse animations. Uh, the first one here, okay, so some interesting things going on here. So what, we've, what we're using is a, a transform animation and our options are ease in out, repeat and then auto reverse, okay. So, easy, so we've, we're getting that smooth motion, we're going to repeat it over and over again and once it's gone up, we're going to make it come back down. And so here's our scaling, we're going to go from 0.9 of its original size up to its full size. No rotation, no translation. So it goes from small to large, easing in and then it reverses itself and keeps repeating. So that's the first one. The second one, is the same except for the fact that I actually have an, a have an alpha fade happening at the same time. So as it gets large, it does the fade. As it gets small, it goes the other way. So by combining these two together, then you get this very cool effect of it lifting in and out from the page. Okay. So, and I've actually used that again, you can see it here, I've used it for the full screen slideshow. I've made a, another little button that just sits up at the top. Using exactly the same files, okay, I've just um, uh, changed the button itself. Okay, that shimmy wiggle in place. A um, couple of tips, always try and put your animations into an object rather on a layer. This minimizes the file size and also results in faster loading and less flashing on the page. As sometimes big pages load, they flash a bit. And if you're placing your animation within a slideshow, you need to make sure the object, you need to move the object to the slideshow root, root folder. Okay. Right now, so the, that one we're looking at there, the vertical full screen slideshow, you can see here's my two logos in here as well. Okay, any questions? So text objects, uh, vertical full screen slideshow, uh, running out of time. What we're going to look at now is B pages and full screen slideshows. So this is a, 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 a neat little thing. So let's say for instance in here, I've, I've got a page and I built this as a B page. So if I look at, uh, if I come into here, you'll see that you'll see that this is a, a B, B1-1. So if I tap on here, it takes me into a full screen slideshow. This is just a regular old slideshow. 
Something like that. Tap comes back out. Tap, you come in again. But if I rotate and I point it into the same slideshow, then it won't fill the screen. But in this case, what happens now when I tap, it actually takes me to a landscape version of the full screen slideshow. Rotate back. I've got a portrait slideshow. Come around the other way. I've got a landscape slideshow. Okay, to achieve this, it's very, very simple. So we've got our B1 page here. Just zoom out here. I've got a B1-2 that's got my little button animation on it on the top. Now what I've got are two, a portrait and a landscape page. So the portrait page has a little button here pointing to S1. The landscape page has another button, this time pointing to S2. So I've got two slideshows. I've got an S1 and an S2. The S1 is obviously my vertical one and the S2 is my landscape one. So what you, the trick here is the fact that you can mix B pages with L and P pages on other levels. So as the person rotates the page, you see different things on the other levels. It, and not only slideshows, but it can be all sorts of things. You rotate the page, you can have the same background, but maybe different, different content or different words, etc. You can have a logo that changes saying, rotate back for this, etc., or showing the orientation. Okay. So the trick to building these is quite simple. Uh, if you just come into here, we'll look at the... Um, we're going to build a, a, a page. So basically what we do is we take an image like that. So let's say, for instance, here we're going to... Um, we're going to put uh, a graphic over the top. I'll do it on the same one. So this will be our... This will be our link to our so link to our S1 page. Okay, so we know in this case, you know, if that orientation is right, that's exactly where we want the button. But you know, if we if we change it to the other way, you know, it, um, we need to reflect a, a different button and maybe a different size, etc. So one of the things you can do here now is just simply uh, take all of that. In fact, I've, done, I've got one here, where you simply rotate the page with, have I got the toggle on here? Oh, there it is there. Which is that one, the orange. Sorry, let me just come back to here. I'll deal with this one. So select the whole thing, group it, copy it, drag in a new page, change the orientation of the page, paste that in place. Because we know what happens when we do a B page, the contents of the, the portrait page get scaled to fit the width. So all we need to do is that. Then we would simply uh, un select this and ungroup it. I'm just going to copy that and we get rid of everything else and edit, paste in place, and there's our B page. So there, sorry, there's our L1-1, L1-2 page. Hide all that and all of it. Uh, hang on a sec. And just ungroup that. Okay, so turn all F. Okay, so there's our L uh, P1-2 page. There's our L1-2 page. And we turn all these things on again. Turn that off. And there's our B page. Okay, so that's uh, B pages and full screen slideshows. How are we doing for time? Can you still hang in for a second? Do you want me to keep going? Okay, if you guys are going to hang with me, we'll, we'll finish it off. 
Excellent. Okay, uh, the next one we're going to look at is looping video. This is what people ask a lot for. They want either a background to keep looping or they want some small, you know, maybe it's part of a, a, a button, they want to, a, a color to flash through a button or something, but they, want it, they don't want it just to play once, they want it to, to keep looping. Now, a little while ago, I'd actually created a, tumult, a, a, a video on how to do it using Tumult Hype. Tumult Hype's a, another program you have to buy, and it creates an HTML overlay that loops the video. The one I'm going to show you now is quite a bit simpler, and you don't have to go out and look for any external files. So let's come in, let's just hide InDesign, and let's take a look at looping video. So I've got this little video player, and as you can see, it's about a 17 second loop, and in a second it'll come around and it'll play again. Go with the, go with the red uh, lipstick, sunrise. Some in the girl with the red lipstick, come on. There she goes, okay. so. Let's take a look and see what we've got. So first of all, here's my little movie. So it obviously is looping because we can, we've been around a couple of times in it. So it's quite simple if we come and look at our P1 page. What I've got down here is a hotspot uh, for an object and I've just called it object one. Over the top of this, um, I've got this little TV that's sitting down here on this page, and the TV's got a hole cut in it, okay? So we can see what's ever behind it. Okay. Now, you'll notice that the video frame matches the size of the video, but it extends out beyond it. What you can't see on here, on either side of this, are some white elements that actually sort of block that out. The whole trick to it is this simple little HTML page. And oh, it's going to open in Safari. We don't want to do that. I'm just going to open up text. And we'll paste it in here so you can see. OK, so in my object, I have this little block of HTML saved as s1.html. And basically, what it's doing here, this is the trick, it's saying fit, basically what it's going to do here, it's going to fit the video to the object, it's going to, it's going to scale it down exactly to fit, and it's just looking for a source movie here, so setting a video file to loop, no. Uh, th there is no looping function with inside oomph at the moment. Um, you know, you can set a video file to loop in InDesign, but it won't translate to OOMF. This is the only way we can loop at the moment. So uh, basically that's all you do is you just drop that little file in and you can download it from uh, the forum after I've posted it. And we don't, want to, we don't want to save that, so we can delete that. So drop it in as an s1-1.html, drop your MP4 movie in there with it, and just put it into your page and there you go, looping video, nice and easy. Um, I don't know how many of you, any of you using InDesign 6? Okay, okay, whoa, a lot of you. Okay, so we all know about the, uh, oh Joe, you're lucky, we all know, you know about the dreaded um, hyperlink bug. So I'm going to give you a little tip here to speed things up. So if we come in and create a hyperlink, and we name it something like, uh, this is a bug. Okay, so I've got some kind of spacing in it, or I've got a, I've got a comma, I'm doing you know, uh, action, uh, get object one, and I want to apply an animation, RAM, to it, and what have you. So I say OK. Now, I don't know if you can see down there, but 
this is a bug inside InDesign. And basically what it's doing, it's putting these uh, ASCII characters in where there are spaces. Now, if we output this, uh, this hotspot with this uh, format in, it is not going to work at all. But fortunately, on our forum, we do have a little uh, script that you can download and add into InDesign that fixes it. So I'm just going to show you here. I'm just going to go into Window, Utilities, Scripts. Okay. And here's the little script we've got, which is called decode URL. Okay. So if you download that, the way you find out where to put it is come into here and just say reveal in Finder, and basically open up that section, and then you just drop the just drop the JSX file in there wherever you want, and then it will appear in place. So that's the first little tip to find out where to put it. Just right click, and there it is. So if I want to uh, if I want to decode this now and fix it up, I double click on there. And there it is. Now it's back to where it's supposed to be. Now this is a bit of a pain if you, you know, if you've if you've got a lot of them and you've got to do it a lot. You're always sort of opening script file up, double clicking down here. I'm going to show you a quick way to do this. So once again, let me just uh, I'm going to open this up, and we'll put something else in here. Test just so it'll screw it up again. Okay. As soon as you do, as soon as you change anything, it, it screws it up. What we're going to do is we're going to add a keystroke to the script. So the first thing you do is you come into Edit, Keyboard Shortcuts. Then what you do is under the product area, come down to where it says Scripts. Now these are all the scripts that are there. So I'm going to scroll down until I find the one that I want to use, which is the decode. There it is under User. It's called Decode URL. I highlight it, tap into New Shortcut, and I'm going to hold down the Alt the option command and the forward slash keys. Okay, so this is just one that I use, option command and forward slash. It's going to be the default and I'm going to assign it. What it's going to do now, there's a default set of keystrokes. I'm going to create a new set that will include this one and I say yes and I'm just going to call it Tony, hit OK and then OK and save it. So now I don't have to have my script window open at all. I'm, I'm beetling away and I'm adding lots of hyperlinks and they're all, they're all looking nasty because they're all coming up looking like this. So all I have to do is you run my keystroke by doing option command forward slash. So no script window open, nothing else, just that one simple key command and it quickly updates it. So that's my little InDesign workflow tip. Uh, one of the things we're going to look at now are custom rotate pages. Now we all know, like if we're coming into a uh, doing something and we do a rotate, we get the the rotation uh, page from Oomph. Uh, let me see if I've got one here. Uh, Oomph. Uh, probably got something. Um, uh, testing. Uh, best of passwords. Let me see what I've got here. So this could be it. So I'm just going to drag that onto Orf Editor. Oh, I love Orf Editor. So let's uh, go to the simulator with that. Okay, so if I rotate this. Okay, we get this view is unavailable, rotate to view correct orientation. So in a lot of cases, you know, we may only building, be building for one aspect. We may build for, you know, um, portrait or landscape. Um, in fact, I think I've got one here that um, that I might be able to show you that we're actually doing for fatigue. Um, cover assets. Um, Oh, no, I don't. Anyway, so <laughs> let's come back to this one. So we've got, this is what happens. So, you know, obviously this page is going to work. Uh, this page is going to give us the view to correct orientation. Now, if we've got 20 or 30 sections having to create a page for the rotation and put it into each, um, a custom rotation page and put it into each, each folder, it's going to increase our size of our files dramatically. So what we can do is we can actually do something like this. So if I come into back into 
our webinar and I'm going to look at all on the simulator. And wait for a second for it to build. What's it doing here? Come on. Let me just let's quit out of the simulator. We'll try that again. Oh, oh editor's gone. Bye bye. Yeah, let's say that. Okay, let's just do that again. Oh, where's my old editor gone? Hang on a sec. There we go. Right. Okay. So as I move through here, obviously I've got I've got certain pages here, and um, you know, but these are all sort of uh, uh, p pages. So what happens here if I rotate? So here I've got a custom custom page telling me to rotate the screen. If I slide to the next one, I've got the same thing and the same thing and the same thing and the same thing until obviously I get to a page that is designed to rotate. So here, where I don't have anything in the L version, I've only got a P version, I get a custom rotation page. Here, which is a B page, then I don't need to show the custom rotation. So how can I automate that? Okay. So the way we automate it is, once again, we start using our shared folders. If I open Shared and Layers, I can create a folder called Default. And you'll notice in there, in Default, it's got an L1-1.pdf. Because it's named default, it will apply this page to every landscape page or every landscape section that doesn't have a corresponding page in it. So if I look at these pages, these are all P, these are P, these are P. Now obviously here, a B page in the orientation becomes an L. So it's not going to show there. So it automatically knows when to show and when not to show a page. So it's a quick little way of creating a custom rotate page and not having to put it into every, um, every section. So that's custom rotate page. Uh, Non-sequential animations. Okay, so standard animations are easy and quick to make, but we all know that they run sequentially one after the other. So what happens when you want them to run at the same time? That's when we start, that's when we need to use animated hotspots. And I'll show you an example of that that I've got here. Let me just load this up again. So if I come into here and we look at B page looping video, we've done that in design workflow, default rotation page, animating hotspots. What you'll see up here, there will be um, a, a hotspot, an animated uh, action that will come across here, giving us a prompt to swipe. So if I do that. Okay, it's a bit jerky coming through the connect, but when I look at it here, it's it's a very smooth sort of transition. You get one, two, three, four, so four objects sort of moving in sort of simultaneously with slightly different settings. Uh, one of the other interesting things is that um, notice the direction of the swipe to begin. Uh, I was doing something the other day where I actually had it pointing the other way, indicating that they should move to the right, and the person actually tried to uh, swipe the other way. So we need to swipe to the left. It's a little UI tip. Okay, so how do we do this? 
So basically what I've got in here is my, is my basic page here. And then I've got a layered page over the top. And off to the side here, I've got four hotspots. And then if I drag them out, you can see here, one, two, three, four. So these four are sitting off there. Swipe, swipe one, two, three, and four. And each of them have an animation. P move three, P move four, P move one, P, P move two. In here, I've got little graphics. I've got one, two, three, four graphics and a bit of text. So what happens in the animations is, is that they, because they're in hotspots, we can animate the hotspots. And the difference between animating pages and animating hotspots is that animating hotspots can all happen at the same time. They don't have to happen sequentially. So if we look at the, look at the text we've got here, what you'll see is that we've got four text files that move at slightly different speeds. So our first one starts after a delay of two seconds. It takes three seconds to complete the move across. And it's going from the 0, 0 point, which is off the side, to minus 755. Okay? And it's doing a alpha fade up over the three seconds, and it's going to be delayed by three. So you've got to think these two are happening at the same time. So there's a delay of two, there's a delay of three. So the alpha transition will start one second after this one leaves. Then we get to number two. Number two is the same duration, but this leaves half a second later than the first one. Goes to the same place, has the same duration of the fade up, but once again, this one needs to start half a second later than this one. And then the same with three, and this is three and four now, because the delay is three, and then the last one is a half a second behind again. So by the time you get to the fourth one, it's actually one second behind here. So you create four animations with slight delays, and then each of those animations will start happening at, at the same time, but because there's a slight delay, you'll get that feeling of overlap. I could have had them all come in at the same time if I wanted to. I could have had them come in from different points and all end up at the same point. It doesn't really matter. So there's a lot of variation in what you can do. So that's using non-sequential animations. Okay, so almost there. the last thing I've got is not really, uh, I'm not going to show you how to do it because I'm not going to have time, but it's something that we've all been looking for, for, I've been looking for for quite a while, and it's what's called parallax slideshows. Um, I don't know if you know what a parallax slideshow is, but it's where elements of a slideshow move at different speeds. So I found, um, a piece of open source software, and I'm going to post it up on the forum. Um, if you use it, you've just got to make sure you leave any copyright notices in there. But basically what this is, is a parallax slideshow inside Oomph. So the cool thing is, is as you move it, objects move independent of each other on multiple layers. So you can see as I move this up and down, the balloon's moving behind the text, and then even behind that further is that the clouds are moving behind there as well. And it has some very nice little sort of bouncing features in it where it comes to settle. Okay, it'll work in both horizontal and landscape. Here's a landscape version. And then basically all you need to do is go in and replace your own graphics with it. Um, if we look at the, the pages where it is, you can see it's HTML. There's quite a bit of HTML. Um, so down here I've just done a, a swipe area that allows me to swipe. Um, because once you've got HTML on your page, you can't swipe. And the same thing for the landscape. Um, there's a folder with the different images in here. They're just PNG files with... Um, <laughs> it's basically you just take this file and then 
uh, you've just got to go in and do a little bit of editing to um, to put your different layers in. So uh, I, I took the initial thing and I, I added the bit that I added. So these first three balloons are in there and I added the jumbo age. So this is an additional element that I've just added in there. I've changed and modified the background slightly in different size, what have you. See here's my little swipe to move because otherwise if you try and swipe on an HTML it's not going to move. So really, yeah, I'll probably do something where I, I explain it a bit, a bit more clearly. But basically, I built uh, a new uh, section in here, uh, a new div with information in it, and then there's a little, there's a little bit of work you can do here in terms of changing the JavaScript. So it's, uh, it's not a great deal. You just need to know which little bit to go in and, and edit. But uh, certainly, yes, you can get lovely parallax slideshows working in ORF, which is very cool. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. But listen, once again, thanks, uh, thanks for, for being here. Um, my final tip for tip number 13 is to have a great and safe Christmas and have a really happy new year, guys. And um, I look forward to uh, seeing you in the new year online. <laughs>